In this video, I'd like to talk to you about casting. Now, having done tutorials for the past five or six years, I feel this is one very important area that lets so many people down. Before the tutorial, I always say to the angler, what is it you would like to learn about? What is it you'd like to develop further? And they may say rigs or bait application, but never does anyone say casting because people don't realize that it is actually costing them fish until it is pointed out. And that's what I'd like to look at in this video. For this session, I have come to Old Mill Birch Lake. Now this lake has an incredible stock of really, really big fish to over 60 pounds. But as you'd expect, the fish themselves are not easy to catch. It's a typical pressured water. The fish react very quickly to angling pressure. So I think this is the perfect venue to highlight the importance of casting, as well as casting and fishing accurately. And hopefully we can put a fish on the bank too. Now many people look at casting as simply a means of getting their rig in the water, but it is so much more than that. In fact, it really is a skill within itself. Now, when I talk about the, the skill of casting, I don't just mean accuracy, which yes, is very, very important, but I also mean the manner in which the lead enters the water. And all too often, I see anglers completely ruining their chances with just one cast. Now again, I'm going to use the tutorial sessions as an example here. And there have been numerous occasions when it's been really, really tough going on a session, no signs of feeding fish. Then all of a sudden you get this small window of opportunity where the fish start feeding and it may only last for a few short moments. And obviously you've got to make the most of these chances when they present themselves. And time and time again on, on sessions where there have been these fleeting moments anglers have completely ruined their chances with just one cast. The lead has thundered in far too fast, right on top of feeding fish. The lead hasn't been controlled or slowed down in any way. And that lead hitting the water at full speed sounds like a, an atom bomb under the water. And that's it. Fish stop feeding as quickly as they started. And that's what we don't want to be doing. And I'm going to show you how you can avoid doing that right now. Now to illustrate this point, I'm going to be using my leading rod, which is also my spot rod. And I just want to say that I do think it's really important to minimize the amount of casts going in the swim. I think every cast you make is going to reduce your chances of a quick bite. And you know, the more casts that are going on, the more pressure there is on the swim, the more disturbance, the more those fish are going to be on edge and become harder to catch. So I do think it is important to do as few a cast as possible. And that is where accuracy is really important. So to improve your accuracy, the first thing I would say is to put your left foot forward. If you're right-handed, I'm right-handed. So my left foot forward and is pointing towards where I want the lead to land, which in this case is uh, just in front of the remains of an old swim on the island there. So my left foot is now pointing directly at that old swim. I'm now going to put the rod kind of in my hip, also pointing at the same mark. So my left foot and the rod are both pointing at exactly the same place. Now that lead should go there. I could do this with my eyes closed, the lead will go there because my body, my stance, everything is pointing directly at the target. I see a lot of people stood with their feet together, maybe it's pointing over there and they're wanting to cast over there. Everything's kind of out of sync. You know, your, your body's shaped to cast one direction, your arms are shaped to cast another direction. What you end up having is your cast going sort of somewhere in between. So, my foot and the rod are pointing at the mark on the island. Now, I know a lot of people, they kind of stand there like this for, for quite a while, getting their aim. We did all the lining up beforehand, the foot and the rod were pointing in the place. So there should really be no need for this. I do find a lot of people when they, when they are doing this, they're kind of overthinking things. And I, I think if anything, more mistakes can be made. So I'm already lined up. So I know the lead's gonna go there. So I just bring the rod smoothly back. 
and there we go. It's gone exactly, exactly where my foot is pointing. You could get a, you could draw a line from my foot to that spot. It's gone exactly on that line. Now I was watching the flight of the lead all the way, all the way from as it left, left the rod to the spot. I was watching that lead and I was keeping the line in check, controlling it, reducing the speed of which the lead was traveling. And just before the lead was about to hit the water, when the lead was perhaps a foot, 18 inches above the water, I then stopped the line on the spool and the lead just dropped in, just from a foot above the water. So what you had there was just a little tiny plop of the lead landing. If I hadn't have controlled the lead, that lead would have just traveled full speed into the water, drilled in like a missile. That makes such a thud. It makes such a loud sound under the water. And like I was using the, the tutorials as an example, those, those fish that were perhaps feeding in the area or in that vicinity, that lead thundering in at full speed, they're not gonna hang about. So that one cast has done several things, really. It's got the rig in place in a nice, controlled manner which hasn't spooked the fish in the area by trapping the line and stopping the lead just before it hits the water it's flicked the rig forward so that rig is not tangled by controlling it down to the lake bed i built up an understanding of how deep the swim is and by feeling that lead down on the bottom it's told me that the lake bed is nice and clean there and the rig is presented perfectly so i've just cast the lead in position right on the spot where i want to be fishing I've still got the line trapped on my finger there. So what I'm going to do now is just put that line in the clip on the reel. So what that does, that now enables me to keep a recording of the distance which we're going to be fishing. So all I would need to do now is wrap the line around some distant sticks then repeat the process with one of our actual fishing rods. Then I know that my fishing rod will be fishing at exactly that same spot. Now with this rod, I'm reeling in my, my lead in about rod. I did say at the start that this is also my spot rod. So while I've used the lead to, to find the spot and make a record of the distance we're going to be fishing at, all I would need to do now to introduce some bait is simply take off that lead, put on a impact spot or a spom, and I can cast that back out onto that same mark, deliver some bait into the swim, wrap the rods out to the same distance, cast it back out over there, and I know my bait and my rigs are exactly on that same little spot. So I've just placed the rod on the ground. I've got one stick right by the butt, another one right by the tip. So the sticks are now placed 12 foot apart it's a 12 foot rod the 12 foot apart or four yards or one wrap as we call it and although you could place the sticks however far apart you like it is good for for future reference if you are going to be fishing a lake regularly by always having the sticks the same distance apart and if you are keeping notes like for, for me for example i like to keep all my spots that have produced well for me on all the lakes i fish i make a note in the swim mapper app of the, the spots I would fish in the swim, the marks that have been productive or where I've seen fish. And also, I think the wrap has become almost a universal measurement in carp fishing. Quite often, if you go into a new venue and you speak to the bailiff, they say, oh, it's a great spot at 20 wraps or 10 wraps or whatever. So it has become like a universal measurement, the, the 12 foot, four yard, one wrap. So I'm gonna start by putting the lead by the left stick. The reason I do that is by always starting on the left, I will always have an even number of wraps on the left and an odd number of wraps on the right. That way you just know if you've miscounted. Okay, so that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. So that's 13 and slightly over half. So yeah, 13. 13.6 wraps if we're going to be exact. 
So what I would do now, I can wrap out my fishing rod to exactly that same distance. And I know a lot of people kind of get a bit confused about if they're fishing in deep water, whether they should wrap their fishing rods out to the same mark and what sort of equation is there for working out how much further you wrap your fishing rods to your spodding rods. Well, in this instance, the lake where I'm fishing, it's only about six foot deep. And at that sort of range, at that sort of depth, it wouldn't worry me at all. I would just wrap them out exactly the same. And it all depends on where you're hitting the clip anyway with your spod rod. If you're hitting the clip back here, obviously the spod isn't going to be traveling as far as if you're hitting the clip there. So I'd have a little bit of a scattering of bait. I don't want everything totally tight on a bin lid. I'd, have, I'd be hitting the clip some here, some there. That way I've got a little bit of a, a little spread of bait for which me to drop a rig on. So what I'm doing now, I'm wrapping out my fishing rod to the same distance as the leading around and spotting rod, which was 13.6 wraps. So one, two, three, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, just over half near that stone. Put that in the clip. So that's wrapped up to 13.6 wraps, exactly the same as the lead and about rod. So what I'm going to do now is take the lead off the lead and about rod, put on a spod, get a bit of bait in, get the fishing rod in place. And I know everything is all fishing on that nice tight little mark. Now I said before that my leading rod is also my spotting and spawning rod and the way that works is I have the lead here attached to a, a quick release loop and all that is it's just a big overhand loop tied at the end of the, uh, the shock leader and on the end of that loop I've tied another loop just to create a tag and when you pull on that tag that opens the loop I can then take the lead off and attach my spawn. So it's just a case of passing, passing the big loop through and then quickly change from the lead to the spawn. I have in the past used quick change and snap links, but after sort of heavy use through the day, I have had them come off, whereas I just find that is a lot more reliable and it works, it works a treat. So the spawn is now attached. This is the midi spawn. There are other sizes in the range, but for the distance I'm going to be casting and the amount of bait I want to introduce, this size spawn is absolutely perfect. So we're all wrapped up, all clipped up, ready to go. Let's get some bait in the swim. So the spawn is loaded up, we're wrapped up, we're clipped up, ready to get some bait in the swim. You'll notice I am wearing a glove, a spawn glove, Although I'm not casting any sort of distance today, I do think it is a good habit to get into. I've seen it in the past where people are going for a big chuck and they're using braided mainline coupled with a braided shock leader. And on those big casts, that braid can slice into your finger. And in some instances, it can cause a nasty injury. So it is a good habit to get into to wear a glove to protect your finger. Um, before we cast out, it's important to take up the exact same position we did when we clipped up on the reel. So I've kind of got a little marker in the gravel here right next to my rods. I can see where my feet were placed. So again, I'm going to take the exact same position. So the foot, my left foot is pointing exactly where we're going to be casting. The rod is in my hip. Also pointing exactly where we're going to be casting and that's where it's going to go it'll go exactly where i want it to we do have a bit of a side wind today though and uh with the spawn being quite a, a bulky item it can be affected it can be affected by a side wind so what i'm going to do i'm going to cast it a little bit harder than i would just to cut through cut through that wind and it should hit the mark all the same okay here we go So 
So now I've got the bait on the spot. I'm now going to repeat the exact same process with the actual fishing rod. So this is all wrapped up and clipped up to the same distance. Uh, this is the rig I'm going to be using. I'll, I'll tell you a little bit more about it in, in more detail in a short while. But it's basically a Ronnie rig there, baited with a washed out pink Carp Freaks pop-up. And uh, yeah, it's a nice low lying pop-up, something that's nice and visual. And uh, hopefully it's enough to tempt us a bite. Heart is in my mouth. <laughs> it's gone right round an island. It's starting to come back through though. Yeah, he's coming freely now. A few little hairy moments there. He went round the island, just gently coaxed him back round. Now he's in open water. He's just kind of hugging that margin of the island as he's coming in. I'm not liking that. I don't know what's down there. I know they've cleared lots of branches and trees from that margin on the island. I don't know what's falling in the water. She's plodding around at the moment, not doing a lot. There's so many big fish in this lake. Every time that alarm goes, the heart's just in your mouth. And it doesn't feel a huge fish, I'm not gonna lie but it's still nerve-wracking all the same. Not doing a lot, it's just plodding in. I don't think it's a big fish, I really don't. But I think any fish from here is a, a result. It can be a very, very moody lake. You can switch on and off just like that. Some days it can be the easiest place in the world to fish and others, it can be an absolute slog. Get in that net. He's in. He's in, it's a bit bigger than I thought. It's kind of grew as it got, got closer to the net. He'll do. Well, we are up and running and, and what a fish to do it with as well. When I was playing it, I only thought it was a, a small one and. All the way in, I, I kind of convinced myself it wasn't a big fish, but as it went over the net cord, it suddenly doubled in size. Well, check this out. What a way to get this session up and running. 34 pound, four ounces. And this really does highlight the importance of accurate casting, minimal disturbance, because these fish, they're not easy to catch. They're under constant angling pressure and they're very, very quick to react to it. Thankfully, that never happened. And we've got the first fish of the session under our belt. It's the fishery rules that all fish over 30 pounds are not even to be brought out of the water. The unhooking, the weighing, everything is done in the water. That's what we've done with this fish. And especially on the approach to spawning time, it really is great fishery management, great fish care and it's time to slip this fella back. Off you go. Yes, I'm buzzing with that. Absolutely made up. So this is the rig that has just caught me a 34 pounder. And I guess it's what you would call a Ronnie rig. And I know right now some of you are shouting at your tellies, at your phones saying, but you said Ronnie Riggs is And yes, maybe as I said that in the past, I've not been their biggest fan and I've always kind of steered away from using them just because I always believed that my version um, of the doubled over hinge stiff rig tied very, very short can achieve the exact same thing, but fewer people use it. And I think now on reflection, it probably gives an almost identical presentation to my short version 
of the doubled over hinge stiff rig for it's a damn sight easier to tie. Um, when I am fishing over weed and debris, um, I do still prefer a hinge stiff rig, I have to say. But when I want to fish a, um, a shorter pop-up, but it's still something that is prominent and visual, then yes, I do kind of like the Ronnie rig. I've, I've become a fan. So there you go, I've said it, I've said it. So yeah, anyway, it's tied using, um, the boom section is 25 pound Camatex Soft. That goes down to a size five medium curve hook. I know there are uh, quick change uh, sleeves and things available, but if I'm honest, I'm not using this rig just because it's convenient and easy to change the hooks, I'm using it for its hooking properties. And I do believe that the shrink tube steamed down over the quick change hook swivel, to me looks a lot neater than a sleeve. And I know a lot of people out there will be saying, well, that kind of defeats the object of using a Ronnie if you're not able to change the hook quickly. Well, I'm not using it for that. I'm using it because it has fantastic hooking properties. And I believe I can tie that boom section just as quick, if not quicker, than it would if I had to change the hook with all the components as well. Now, just touching on that point for a second, I do pre-tie a lot of my Ronnie rigs. I've got them all here in packets, all pre-tied. Um, so they're all there, ready to go. It's just a case of attaching a new boom section to them, which like I said, takes no time at all. The same speed it would if I had to change the hook and put all the new components back on. So they're all ready to go. And I guess the final important piece of the rig is the hook bait. And in this instance, I'm using my ever faithful Carp Freaks pop-ups. Uh, these are the 12 mil and they have been boosted a little bit, um, but they sit absolutely perfectly under the weight of the size five medium curve hook. It's a very, very slow sinking hook bait. It's critically balanced, which means when the fish sucks in this hook bait, it flies in the mouth very freely. And due to the fantastic hooking properties of the rig, it catches hold every time. Well, that's it for this video. It's not quite it for my session though. I'm gonna stick it out for a little bit longer and hopefully I can put one of the uh, really big girls on the bank that Old Mill Birch Lake is known for. And I'm sure a lot of people watching this video may be thinking to themselves, well, I don't cast in the way that, that I've shown here and I still catch fish. Well, yeah, that may well be true. Um, I'm sure on a lot of waters, a lot of venues, it may not be quite as important to get your rig in place as stealthily as, as can be done. But what I would say to that really is don't focus on the fish that you are catching, focus on the fish that you're not catching. Focus on how you can catch more fish. And if all the things I've explained in this video can give you a bit more of an edge and put more fish on the bank, then surely that's gotta help. But that is it from me for now. If you've enjoyed watching this video, please give it a like, and don't forget to subscribe to the Fox International YouTube channel, where you can check out loads of videos full of hints and tips just like this one.